Dead America. New York Tales. The Maniacs. By Derek Slayton. Chapter 1. Day Zero Plus Four. As the sun crested the horizon, casting a faint glow over the post-apocalyptic world, Mason and Hudson, brothers bound by blood and survival, toiled away within the confines of their mechanics haven nestled deep in the heart of Brooklyn. Their figures towered, each standing over six feet tall, their frames chiseled and hardened like ancient statues hewn from granite. The rhythm of their labor was matched only by the beat of their hearts, as they forged the tools necessary for their continued existence in a world overrun by the undead. With their own business as their sanctuary, they had honed not only their skills but also their bodies, dedicating countless hours to sculpting the physical fortitude required to endure the trials of their new reality. Beyond mere strength, they understood the importance of agility and combat prowess, a knowledge gleaned from nights spent training at a renowned mixed martial arts academy. Though the allure of the ring beckoned, their commitments to their garage outweighed the desire for glory, relegating their skills to the realm of necessity rather than spectacle. The garage boasted a modest expanse, offering shelter for up to three vehicles under its roof, secured by the descent of heavy doors. However, on this fateful day, the aftermath of sluggish business prior to the arrival of the undead left only a solitary vehicle within its confines, its front axle fractured, a casualty of neglect. In one bay, Mason meticulously wielded a hand welder, fusing a filed-down bolt to a length of chain, fashioning a makeshift weapon. Across the empty space, Hudson's silhouette danced amidst cardboard adversaries, his grip firm on a crimson fire axe as he methodically cleaved through imaginary foes adorned with crudely drawn undead features. Amidst the cacophony of metal on metal, a relentless pounding echoed from beyond the confines of their sanctuary, a grim reminder of the horrors lurking just beyond their reach. With each swing, Hudson's battle cries pierced the air, his blows landing with satisfying thuds against the illustrated heads of his make-believe adversaries. Closing the distance to his brother, his inquiry cut through the din of their work. How's your project coming along, bro? Hudson asked. With precision, Mason's torch met the metal, a burst of light and heat melding the components together before he extinguished the flame, setting the tool aside. Raising the finished product for inspection, he presented the chain, its form compact yet deadly, with an eight-inch bolt at its core, honed to a lethal point. I call it the aerator, Mason declared, his voice carrying a note of grim satisfaction. One punch, and the air's going straight to the brain. Hudson's nod of approval mirrored the gleam in his brother's eyes. I like it. Did you make one for me? A grin spread across Mason's features as he gestured towards a nearby cardboard box its contents revealed to hold several replicas of the makeshift weapon. I figured we might have to let one go if it gets stuck. So, I made us a few spares, Mason explained. Hudson's face lit up with unbridled enthusiasm, his expression akin to that of a child on Christmas morning, excitement dancing in his widened eyes. You're the best, bro, he exclaimed, gratitude infusing his words. We're going to bust some heads together. Mason returned the sentiment with a nod, his focus shifting to their impending confrontation. How's your axe play coming along? He inquired, a hint of anticipation coloring his tone. Hudson's confidence radiated as he replied, I got the swing down pretty good. Those things aren't going to know what hit them. As the relentless pounding on the garage door persisted, drawing their attention once more, Mason sought to assess the situation. Any idea how many are out there, he asked. Sounds like half a dozen or so in front of the shop, Hudson reported. A shared glint of excitement sparked in their eyes as they prepared for battle. Hudson gripped his axe, readying himself for the fray, while Mason donned a thick glove before securing one of the chain weapons around his hand. He adjusted the spike to align perfectly with his fist, a momentary pause before readiness settled over him. Let's go have some fun, bro, Mason declared his voice tinged with adrenaline. Both men made their way to the rear of the garage, their footsteps echoing against the concrete floor. As they reached the side door, Hudson took the lead, his movements fluid and instinctual. Without hesitation, he seized the handle and yanked the door open, exposing the chaos that awaited beyond. Stepping into the fray, Hudson was met with the immediate threat of a lurking zombie, 
its proximity a mere heartbeat away. Reacting with reflexes honed by years of training, he extended his arm, clasping the undead assailant by its throat and effortlessly hoisting it into the air. With a resounding thud, he slammed the creature to the unforgiving pavement, wasting no time in dispatching it with a decisive blow from his axe. The impact sent a spray of blood skyward, a visceral sight that would unsettle most, yet for Hudson, it elicited only a surge of adrenaline-fueled excitement, his senses heightened by the chaos of battle. Eager to join the fray, Mason assumed the lead, striding purposefully towards the front of the garage. As he reached the entrance, he surveyed the road ahead, noting with some relief the scarcity of undead threats, a result, perhaps, to the bustling commercial activity that once defined this part of Brooklyn, with most of the stores being closed as the apocalypse began. Turning the corner, his eyes fell upon the grim tableau before him. A congregation of half a dozen zombies, their relentless assault on the metal doors serving as a testament to their insatiable hunger. Gripping his chain weapon tightly, Mason approached, his footsteps resolute as he closed the distance between himself and the undead horde. With a determined tap of the spike against the door, he seized the attention of the ghouls before him, their vacant gazes snapping to focus on the new challenger in their midst. Who wants to play first? Mason challenged. With a lone figure breaking rank from the pack, a fresher specimen displaying a hint of residual vigor, the creature surged forward at a halting pace, its movements a grotesque parody of a sprint. Yet, despite the impending threat, Mason remained steadfast, a grin etched across his features like a badge of defiance. As the ghoul closed the distance, Mason's anticipation reached its peak. With a calculated step forward, he unleashed a punch straight ahead, the bolt at the weapon's tip finding its mark with brutal precision. The force of impact was staggering, the bolt driving through the creature's forehead with such ferocity that Mason's knuckles collided with the bridge of its nose. Even as the lifeless body slumped forward, the relentless advance of the remaining zombies continued unabated. With deft efficiency, Mason set to work freeing his weapon from its grisly confines. Rather than withdrawing it in the conventional manner, he seized the shoulder of the fallen ghoul and pushed it downward, ripping the weapon free from the crown of the creature's skull in a visceral display of strength. With practiced precision, Hudson surged forward, his grip firm on the axe as he swung with the force of a seasoned warrior. The impact was thunderous, the blow landing squarely on the side of the zombie's head with bone-crushing intensity. Yet, instead of being sent sprawling, the undead fiend remained impaled upon the weapon, held fast by the sheer force of the strike. Stepping aside to dislodge the body, Hudson cleared the path for Mason to advance, his movements fluid and purposeful. As the next adversary closed in, Mason ducked beneath its grasp, delivering a devastating uppercut that drove the bolt of his weapon straight through the bottom of the creature's jaw and into its brain. With a visceral display of strength, Mason kicked the now lifeless corpse away, tearing through the flesh of its face in the process. Turning his focus to the next assailant, he unleashed a series of rapid punches, each strike driving the bolt deeper into the creature's skull with a fervor that bordered on exhilaration. Though the force behind the blows was restrained, the thrill of battle infused each movement with an electric intensity, a symphony of violence unleashed upon the undead horde. With the last pair of zombies approaching, Hudson assumed the lead. Sensing an opportunity, Mason stepped forward, a glint of excitement dancing in his eyes as he prepared to unleash his next move. Hey bro, watch this. Mason called out, his voice laced with anticipation. With a mighty swing, Mason brought his axe crashing across his body with all the force he could muster. The blade cleaved through the first zombie's skull with such ferocity that it continued its trajectory, slicing through the second creature without pause. As both foes collapsed to the ground in a heap, Mason couldn't contain his excitement, unleashing a triumphant yell before turning to his brother. Their elation was palpable as they exchanged a forceful high-five and a chest bump, the rush of victory coursing through their veins. Hell yeah, bro, we whipped their asses good, Hudson exclaimed, his voice brimming with satisfaction. That feels so good to finally give these freaks a taste of their own medicine, Mason declared, a grin spreading across his features. We're just getting started, though, Hudson replied. Damn right we are. Today's the day, Mason affirmed. As they celebrated their victory with another resounding high five, 
their attention was drawn to the opposite end of the strip mall where their garage resided. While they couldn't see inside the clothing store at the other end, they could make out the figures of ten zombies pressed against the glass, their movements erratic and desperate. What do you think? Hudson queried, his gaze fixed on the potential threat. I think somebody just might be in there, Mason observed. What do you say? You want to do a little hero work before we get going? Mason pondered the proposition for a moment before a grin spread across his face. Oh yeah, and I have an idea. Come on, back into the shop for a minute, he declared. As they retreated into the safety of the garage, Hudson remained vigilant by the door, his gaze fixed on the road outside, ensuring their actions didn't draw unwanted attention. Amidst the quiet, a sudden cacophony of clanging echoed from the far side of the garage, prompting Hudson's inquiry. What are you doing over there, bro? He called out, his curiosity piqued by the unexpected noise. Mason's response carried a note of excitement as he approached, a large metal bumper from a vintage car in tow. Making our lives a lot easier, that's what. Mason declared, a grin spreading across his face. Perplexed yet intrigued, Hudson regarded his brother with a mixture of amusement and curiosity. While I'm happy that you finally found a use for that thing, I'm a little confused as to how you're going to use it, he remarked, his brow furrowing in bemusement. The streets are clear, and those things just want to get into the store down there. They're bunched up pretty good too, he explained. Realization dawned on Hudson, a laugh escaping him as he nodded in agreement. Let's do it, he exclaimed, his enthusiasm matching that of his brothers as they prepared to put their daring scheme into action. With a shared nod of understanding, Hudson gripped his axe tightly while Mason hoisted the bumper to stomach level, determination etched across his features. Advancing towards the mass of zombies, Mason's pace quickened until he broke into a full sprint, a primal grunt escaping his lips as he bore down upon the undead horde. With a resounding crash, the bumper collided with the backs of the creatures, its metal edges sinking into the rotting flesh. Seizing the moment, Mason planted his hands firmly on the bumper, his muscles tensing as he lowered his stance and pushed with all his might. The zombies, caught off guard by the unexpected assault, stumbled forward under the force of Mason's onslaught. The bumper digging into their rotting flesh, trapping them against the front window of the clothing store. With the zombies ensnared and unable to break free, Hudson wasted no time in unleashing his fury upon them. Positioning himself to the right of the line, he swung his axe with unbridled ferocity, each blow landing with devastating force. The first strike cleaved through the skull of the nearest creature, splitting it down the middle and showering the area in a grisly spray of blood and gore. Laughing like a man possessed, Hudson continued his onslaught, each successive blow causing heads to explode in a grotesque display of violence. Mason joined in the macabre chorus, his laughter mingling with Hudson's as they reveled in their grim task. Covered in blood, they pressed on relentlessly, the zombies helpless against their onslaught. As the first line of creatures fell to Hudson's relentless assault, he wasted no time in turning his attention to the second line, dispatching them with equal ease. Together, the brothers wrought havoc upon the undead horde, their laughter echoing amidst the battle. With only four zombies left, their proximity to the window rendered them just out of Hudson's reach. There's only four left, and I don't think I can hit them from here, Hudson remarked. Then let's set them loose then, Mason proposed, dropping the bumper to the ground with a thud, its impact softened by the corpses beneath it. Stepping back alongside his brother, he readied his chain weapon as Hudson raised the blood-stained axe. Mason deftly flicked off some brain matter from the blade of the axe, earning a nod of appreciation from Hudson. Appreciate that, bro, Hudson acknowledged with a grin. Anytime. Now let's have some fun, Mason replied. Hudson took the lead once more, swinging the axe with lethal precision, cleaving through two heads with a single blow. As the zombies staggered from the impact, Mason surged forward, delivering a swift punch to the forehead of the nearest creature, incapacitating it with ease. With the final creature lagging behind, its movements sluggish compared to its companions, it reached out for Mason, its decaying fingers clawing at the air. Reacting with practiced efficiency, Mason seized the creature's wrist and delivered a forceful palm strike to its elbow, the joint bending in a sickeningly unnatural direction. 
Undeterred, the undead fiend continued its relentless advance, its single-minded determination unsettling in its silence. Stepping to the side, Mason aimed a powerful kick at the side of the creature's knee, sending it crashing to the ground. Yet, even as it fell, the ghoul made no sound of pain, its undead instincts driving it forward. Frustration mounting, Mason's patience wore thin. With a decisive punch downward, the spiked chain weapon tore through the top of the zombie's head, ending its existence with a final, resounding blow. As the creature lay still, its lifeless form serving as a testament to their triumph, Mason breathed a sigh of relief, the battle finally at an end. As devilish grins adorned their blood-spattered faces, Hudson and Mason reveled in their victory, their euphoria interrupted by a faint knocking on the window. Turning slowly, they beheld the shocked and terrified expressions of a young man and woman trapped inside the clothing store. Eyes wide with fear and mouths hanging open in disbelief, the occupants of the store bore witness to the gruesome spectacle that had unfolded before them. Yet, despite their terror, Hudson and Mason remained unfazed, their grins unwavering as they stood on top of a pile of corpses. With eerie calmness, both brothers slowly raised their blood-stained hands in unison, offering a friendly wave to the other survivors trapped behind the glass. Chapter 2 The awkward stare down lingered, stretching out for several moments between the brothers and the two individuals within. Jane, a woman in her early twenties with dark hair, stood beside Calvin, a man in his late twenties who epitomized the essence of average. A few more moments elapsed, filled with tentative waves, before the young woman named Jane knocked on the window and gestured towards the road behind them. Following her cue, the two men turned around, catching sight of three zombies emerging slowly from beside a building across the street. Rather than succumbing to panic or rushing towards the approaching undead, they simply shrugged and redirected their attention to the two figures inside the store. Uncertain of how to respond, the woman waved them over. Should we meet the neighbors? Mason asked. Hudson considered for a moment before replying, might as well, we have the time. The two blood-soaked brothers made their way over to the store, while the two survivors within dismantled their makeshift barricade. As they reached the door, Jane swung it open with urgency. Would you two maniacs get inside? She exclaimed, her voice tinged with a mixture of relief and anxiety. Hurriedly, the brothers entered, and Jane slammed the door shut behind them, barring it against potential threats. Surveying their surroundings within the small clothing store, predominantly catering to younger teenage girls, they were met by Calvin, who approached with a wet towel in hand. Here, for the you know, Calvin muttered nervously, gesturing towards their blood-streaked faces. Hudson couldn't help but grin at Calvin's skittishness. The blood on our faces? Yeah, that Calvin confirmed. We appreciate it, man, Hudson replied sincerely. Hudson accepted the towel and gave his face a vigorous wipe, removing about half of the blood before tossing it over to his brother, who followed suit. Mason flashed Calvin a friendly smile before casually discarding the towel onto the floor. Yeah, just put that anywhere, Calvin remarked, his nerves evident as he backed away slightly, making room for Jane to approach. She exuded a feisty demeanor as she addressed them. I'm Jane, and that's Calvin. Thanks for clearing out the front of the store, but just who in the hell are you guys? She inquired with a mix of curiosity and assertiveness. I'm Mason, and that's my brother Hudson, Mason introduced, gesturing towards his sibling. Hudson chimed in, we own the garage at the other end of the building. We were just on our way out when we saw those things trying to get in. So we figured we'd play the hero role before heading out. Heading out to where? Jane pressed, her tone edged with confusion. Before they could respond, Calvin let out a yelp, pointing towards the front of the store where the three zombies from across the street were closing in. We have a little spot down on the Jersey Shore, figured we'd head down there, Hudson replied matter-of-factly. Calvin's frantic gaze oscillated between the two brothers and the encroaching zombies outside, his anxiety palpable. You know man, that's really distracting. Hang on just a second, Mason remarked before striding over to the door. With a casual demeanor, he removed the bar and stepped out into the parking lot without hesitation. He approached the nearest zombie, delivering a punch to its forehead with his makeshift weapon, causing it to collapse. Moving quickly, he delivered a forceful kick to the next creature, sending it sprawling to the ground, creating an opening for the third one to lunge towards him. 
Instead of punching, Mason seized it by the throat and crotch, hoisting it up and flipping it over before driving its head into the other zombies as it struggled to rise from the ground. With efficient brutality, he stomped on both their skulls a couple of times, ensuring their demise, before calmly returning inside. Locking the door behind him, he resumed the conversation as if nothing had occurred. So yeah, Jersey Shore, we've had a place down there for years, Mason stated nonchalantly. It's close to where that state park is, so a little quieter, Hudson added. Calvin and Jane exchanged puzzled glances, clearly intrigued by the brothers' unconventional lifestyle. You two like the quiet? Calvin queried. Why wouldn't we? Mason responded, his tone casual yet firm. Yeah, man, we're either in loud gyms working out or in a loud garage making our money, Hudson explained. Downtime is important, my man. It's good for the soul, Mason added. Calvin stood there, momentarily dumbfounded, before Jane interjected with a nod of agreement. Okay, I agree, quiet is good. But how in the world are you planning on getting down to the Jersey Shore? Do you have a monster truck in that garage of yours? She inquired. Nope, we don't have a monster truck. We don't even have a working vehicle in there, Hudson admitted, shaking his head. Your mechanics. How do you not have a working vehicle? Jane pressed, unable to comprehend the situation. It's too expensive to own a car in the city, so we never bought one, Mason explained matter-of-factly. And the only customer we have at the moment has a broken axle. We would have had it fixed by now, but the part had some shipping problems. Hudson elaborated. Jane could feel a headache brewing, so she rubbed her temples in an attempt to ease her mind. After a moment, she resumed the conversation. So if you don't have a car, how are you planning on getting to the Jersey Shore? She inquired, her curiosity tinged with skepticism. We're going to go by boat, Hudson replied confidently. Oh, you guys have a boat? Calvin interjected, his interest piqued. Not yet, Mason responded with a hint of mischief in his tone. Jane couldn't help but chuckle, shaking her head in disbelief. So you guys are going to steal a boat? She asked incredulously. We prefer the term permanently borrow, Hudson quipped, a smirk playing on his lips. Okay, fine, we'll go with permanently borrow. But where do you plan on finding a boat to permanently borrow? There aren't a lot of private docks in Brooklyn you're going to have to get over to Freeport to even have a chance. And that's what? 20, 30 miles on foot? That would be hard enough with just traffic. Let alone with those things clogging up the road, Jane pointed out. That's why we're going to take the ferry, Mason interjected. Jane looked like she was about to have an aneurysm. Did you just say that you're taking the ferry? Jane's disbelief was evident in her tone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't go down to the Jersey Shore, Calvin added skeptically. It will with us behind the wheel, Hudson responded confidently. You can't just go steal a ferry, Jane protested, her voice tinged with incredulity. Why not? Look around, there doesn't seem to be much of a police presence at the moment, Hudson argued, gesturing towards the deserted streets outside. Besides, we pay our taxes and we're not getting the services we paid for. We figure this will make the city even with us, Mason added, justifying their unconventional plan. You two are out of your minds. I mean, how do you even know that the ferry is still there? Jane pressed. Hudson's grin widened as he glanced over at Mason, giving him a playful smack on the arm. Go ahead, bro. Blow her mind, he urged. The power's been out a couple of days now, but before it went out, one of the news channels had their Statue of Liberty cameras pointed back this way. And wouldn't you know it, a whole line of fairies just sitting there in the East River, Mason revealed, his expression triumphant. Jane's expression started to soften as her mind opened to the idea. That's pretty genius, actually, Calvin remarked, impressed by the brother's plan. Hey, I may look like a muscle-bound meathead, but I... Mason began, only to be interrupted by Hudson. You got lucky because you were watching the television instead of working. You are a muscle-bound meathead. Wear it with pride, Hudson interjected, teasing his brother. Yeah, you're right, bro. Mason conceded, 
breaking into laughter and giving Hudson a friendly smack on the back before wandering through the store to inspect the inventory. Okay, so let's say you make it to the ferry. The keys aren't just going to be sitting there, Jane pointed out, bringing the conversation back to practicality. I'm pretty confident in my ability to hotwire it, Hudson responded confidently. You're going to hotwire the ferry? Are you kidding me? How could you possibly know how to do that? Jane questioned incredulously. Hudson smirked as Mason called out from the other side of the store, where he was examining some jewelry in a glass case. Oh, you're going to love this one, Mason chimed in eagerly. So, my bro and I were watching some heist movie from the 1970s a while back. These cats were stealing everything under the sun. Robbing banks, jewelry stores, cars. You name it, they were taking it for themselves. So we started shooting the shit, talking about everything we could steal, if we ever decided to turn to a life of crime, Hudson explained with a grin. Mason's voice echoed from the other side of the store once more as he rummaged through the jewelry case, trying on various earrings with a carefree attitude. And after we had a few drinks, the targets of our crime spree got bigger and bigger. Until. Mason trailed off, prompting Hudson to pick up the story. Until I said a fairy. To which my bro said. Hudson paused, waiting for Mason to finish. You're being crazy. Those things have got to be on lockdown, Mason interjected with a chuckle. So after agreeing to a friendly wager, I did some research online on fairies. A lot of research, Hudson continued. Don't be modest, bro. You know you totally ordered fairy engine maintenance books online, Mason teased. What can I say when I make a bet? I go all out to win it, Hudson replied with a grin. And what did you find? Jane inquired, turning her attention to Mason, who had wandered over to a small makeup counter. Well, I found a way that should work with the tools that we'd have at our disposal, Hudson replied. Okay, Mason, you're the one who had the bet with him. Did he convince you that he could? Jane pressed. Mason stood up tall, pulling his shirt off abruptly, leaving Jane startled. What the hell are you doing? Jane exclaimed in surprise. Showing you what he won with the bet, Mason declared confidently, a mischievous glint in his eye. Jane and Calvin walked over to Mason, noticing the tattoo on his right shoulder a moderately sized Japanese anime cat with the phrase, I'm a pretty, pretty girl in pink sparkly letters surrounding it. Jane stifled a laugh, shaking her head in amusement. You two really are maniacs, aren't you? She remarked, her tone a mix of amusement and incredulity. We enjoy our lives. Ain't that right, bro? Mason replied, grinning at his brother. Damn right we do, Hudson affirmed, sharing his brother's sentiment. Now, Hudson and I were content hitting the ferry on our own, Mason continued. But since you've been so friendly to us, you are more than welcome to come with, Hudson added. Jane thought about it for a moment, slowly nodding her head in contemplation. You can't seriously be thinking of going with them? Calvin interjected. Why not, Calvin? Jane responded, turning to face him. Those things are everywhere, we're running out of food, the phones are down, and there's been zero indication that anybody is coming for us. If we don't go now, we may never get another chance, Jane explained, her voice tinged with urgency. Calvin hesitated, torn between his fear of facing the zombies outside and the realization that staying in the store wasn't a viable option. Guys, you gotta understand, I'm not much of a fighter, Calvin confessed. That's fine by us. I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but we're having fun out there. But don't worry though, we have a way to make you useful. You got a strong back, don't you? Hudson reassured him. Yeah, kind of, Calvin admitted tentatively. Then we're good there. Jane, what about you? You look like you're fit enough. Are you a fighter though? Hudson inquired, turning to Jane. I worked in a dive bar before taking this job. I know how to throw a punch, Jane affirmed confidently. As Jane spoke, Mason turned around from the makeup counter, his face adorned with vertical lines drawn in black makeup like war paint. The sight startled Calvin when he saw it, but Mason wore a huge grin as he stared at the duo. Well, come on then. Let's go get geared up. 
We're going to go have ourselves a fun day on the water, Mason declared enthusiastically, his excitement contagious. Chapter 3 Mason and Hudson guided Jane and Calvin back to their garage, where they prepared to replenish their supplies. Upon entering, Mason made a beeline for a mini-fridge still operational, its power source a makeshift contraption linked to a car battery. Hey bro, energy drink? Mason offered. Yeah, I'll take one, Hudson accepted. Turning to Jane and Calvin, Mason inquired, Jane? Calvin? I've got plenty, and we can't take them with us. Well, we can, but they wouldn't be cold, so what would be the point, right? I'm all right, Calvin declined. What the hell, I'll take one. Haven't slept well in a week. The extra energy will be good, Jane decided. As Mason handed out the cans, Jane began to open hers, but Hudson intervened. If you're going to ride with us, you got a party like us, Hudson asserted. Fair enough, Jane acquiesced. Mason then fetched three nails from the shelf and distributed them. You know how to shotgun, right? He asked. Jane laughed, nodding her head. I worked in a bar and I went to college. What do you think? I like her, Mason remarked, impressed. They synchronized a quick countdown before driving the nail into the lower end of the can, then raised it to their mouths, popping the top. With determined chugs, all three drained their drinks, Jane punctuating the moment by smashing the can against her forehead. I really like her, Mason reiterated. Focus, bro. Work first, play later, Hudson reminded Mason. Yeah, what he said, Jane echoed, giving Mason a playful wink before strolling away. The brothers exchanged a glance, breaking into laughter before turning their attention to their weapons and gear. Two canvas bags lay on the ground, brimming with various tools, provisions, water, and the makeshift weapons they had crafted. Mason reached for one of the spike chains, handing it over to Jane. Are you a righty or a lefty? Mason inquired. Lefty, Jane confirmed. Nodding, Mason fetched a left-handed glove, passing it to her. This will give you some padding when you punch. The tip is sharp as hell and the weapon is solid. Just make sure to put some power behind it and it should punch through the skull. Sounds good to me. But what if it gets stuck? Jane queried. Just let go of the chain and let them fall. If we can, we'll retrieve it once the coast is clear. If not, I've got about eight more in the bag, Mason assured her. You've been busy in here, Jane observed. Not much to do besides work out and build stuff, Mason replied casually. Calvin interrupted their moment with a resigned sigh as he approached. And let me guess, I'm carrying the bags, he grumbled. You said you had a strong back. Now's your chance to prove it, Hudson replied, handing one of the bags to Calvin. With a grunt, Calvin hoisted both bags onto his shoulder, feeling the weight press down on him. Hudson gave him an encouraging smack on the back. There you go, lift with the legs, and you'll be fine. But you can put them down, we have to talk first, Hudson instructed. Relieved, Calvin dropped the bags to the ground, already regretting admitting he couldn't fight. Okay, we're about four miles away from the East River. There's a lot of blocks between here and there, but the good news is, it's mostly a straight shot. As long as we keep going west, we'll hit the water soon enough, Hudson said. And those zombies, or whatever the hell you want to call them, are everywhere, Jane added grimly. Which means we move fast, Mason chimed in. There's lots of neighborhoods on the way. Wouldn't it be easier to get a car and drive there? Calvin questioned. We get a car only as a last resort. They make too much noise. The last thing we want to do is make noise, Hudson explained firmly. As Hudson voiced his concerns about noise, Mason excused himself from the group. Where are you going? Hudson inquired. I just remembered something, Mason replied cryptically. Moments later, he returned, brandishing a handgun, eliciting curious glances from the others. What? You said too much noise, and it reminded me of this. Just like the car, it's a last resort, Mason explained casually. How in the hell do you have a gun? Jane asked incredulously. Owning a garage can be a dangerous business, especially when we had the tow truck. 
so I jumped through the hoops to get one, Mason revealed. Fair enough, Jane conceded. Okay, so here are the rules, Hudson interjected, taking charge. If something comes up, Mason or I will handle it. If there's a mob, Jane, I'll point out where to go. My brother and I can get a little excited when it comes to fighting. So I just want to make sure you don't get a stray blow. Jane nodded, offering a thumbs up in agreement. Questions? Hudson inquired, scanning the group. Calvin tentatively raised his hand, but Hudson pressed on without acknowledging him. Good, let's head out. The sun is shining, and it's a beautiful day for a walk. The group gathered their gear and stepped out onto the street, all facing westward. The urban landscape stretched out before them, transitioning from a bustling business district into residential neighborhoods. Movement stirred ahead, visible even from several blocks away. Calvin and Jane exchanged uneasy glances, but Mason and Hudson remained undeterred, leading the way down the street. As they approached within a block and a half of the growing mob, now numbering in the low hundreds, Mason and Hudson, however, pressed on without slowing their pace. Guys, I know you two are capable, but that looks like too many even for you, Jane finally spoke up. The brothers exchanged a knowing glance, and Mason gestured towards the corner drugstore. What do you think, bro? Mason inquired. Yeah, we can do a little light shopping on the way through, too, Hudson agreed. If you see something you want, grab it, Mason added. Jane and Calvin watched in confusion as Hudson marched towards the front of the drugstore. Peering inside, they spotted a lone zombie pressing against the glass of the front door. Without hesitation, Hudson drew back his axe and hurled it with all his might towards the door. Although the glass was designed to shatter safely, the force of the axe was enough to punch through it. The handle hung in mid-air as the blade plunged directly into the zombie's head, pinning it against the door. Hudson quickly retrieved his axe, while Mason fearlessly extended his gloved hand through the opening, paying no heed to the glass shard slicing into his forearm. He reached for the door lock, unlatching it and swinging the door open. Stay behind us until we clear it, Mason instructed. Jane nodded in acknowledgement as the two brothers ventured into the dimly lit store, the faint illumination filtering in from the front window. Bloodstains marred the floor, with one particularly long streak leading towards the rear. With only three aisles, the store was compact, and there seemed to be no movement in the left aisle. Mason and Hudson fanned out to cover the other two, their weapons at the ready as they advanced confidently. Near the end of the middle aisle, Mason caught sight of two figures emerging from the shadows, shuffling directly towards him. A grin spread across his face as he raised his spiked fist, eager to engage in combat. With determination in his stride, Mason strode towards the approaching creatures, ready to bust heads. As Hudson dispatched the two approaching ghouls that occupied his aisle, he noticed another zombie trapped behind the pharmacy counter, relentlessly pounding against the plexiglass barrier in a futile attempt to escape. Halting just before the counter, Hudson peered inside, his gaze briefly flickering over the array of medications before settling on the trapped zombie. It was a young woman, her body marred by numerous bite wounds. Glancing down, he spotted several bloody rags strewn about, evidence of her attempts to stem the bleeding. Jane interjected, it wouldn't hurt to get in there. Hudson considered her suggestion before responding, are you a pharmacist? Because I have no idea what most of that stuff is. Jane shook her head. No, but they have boxed cold and flu medicine back there. It's going to be a long winter. Hudson nodded, signaling for Jane to step back, which she did obediently. With a forceful swing, he drove his axe into the plexiglass, embedding it firmly before wrenching it downward. The zombie on the other side, now energized by the prospect of prey, reached out eagerly, but the barrier of the counter hindered its advance. With another powerful swing, Hudson dispatched the undead threat, forcefully removing his axe and allowing the ghoul to collapse to the ground. Don't take too long, we're not going to be able to stay here, Hudson reminded Jane as he helped her over the counter. She grabbed a promotional canvas bag and began filling it with various cold medicines. Hey bro, I'm going to check out the back room, Mason said. Do it. We'll be there in a minute, Hudson affirmed. Mason entered the back room, his gaze falling upon a lone figure sprawled near the back door of the building. The man, or what remained of him, 
bore wounds where flesh had been torn away by savage bites. The zombie made a feeble attempt to rise from the ground, but the damage inflicted upon his legs left him lacking the strength to do so. Mason shook his head in silent acknowledgement as he approached. You didn't have a good day, did you? Mason remarked, his voice tinged with a mix of pity and resignation. Mason lingered for a moment longer, contemplating the grim scene before him, before decisively delivering a blow to the creature's head, mercifully ending its suffering. As he reached for the back door, his attention was drawn to blood staining the lock. Pausing to consider the implications, he was interrupted by the arrival of the others into the back room. How are we looking, bro? Hudson inquired, breaking the silence. Just standing here, hoping we have better luck opening the door than this poor dude did, Mason replied somberly, gesturing towards the lifeless body on the ground. The group followed Mason's gaze, Jane and Calvin visibly recoiling at the sight. Only one way to find out, Hudson declared. Mason nodded and reached for the lock, preparing to unlatch it. Sensing the imminent danger, Hudson gently guided Jane and Calvin behind him, positioning himself as a protective barrier. As Mason pushed the door open, two pairs of zombie hands lunged for him. Reacting swiftly, he used his bare hand to swat the arms aside and darted out of the doorway. With a quick motion, he seized the lead creature by the shirt, delivering a punishing blow to its head with his spiked weapon. A wild gleam sparkled in his eyes as he grinned fiercely, shoving the incapacitated zombie aside before turning his attention to its companion. It's your turn, Mason yelled. Mason's powerful uppercut lifted the ghoul off its feet, the spike piercing through its head and ending its unlife in an instant. As the creature collapsed to the ground, the sound of moaning reached Mason's ears from behind. Whirling around, he beheld a horde of a dozen or so zombies shuffling down the alleyway, with even more emerging from the street behind them. We're not going that way, Mason declared firmly. Surveying the scene, Mason spotted a clearer path in the opposite direction, albeit with a handful of zombies lurking in the alley. He turned back to the door. Looks like we're going this way, bro, Mason announced to Hudson. Lead the way. Hudson responded. With a broad grin stretching across his face, Mason led the group towards the smaller pack of zombies. Closing the distance, he focused on the smaller framed leader, his pace quickening. Launching himself forward, Mason delivered a powerful upward punch, driving his spiked fist through the chest of the ghoul and hoisting it completely off the ground. With relentless momentum, he surged forward, using the creature as a makeshift battering ram to plow through the ranks of the undead. The impacts were forceful and decisive, each blow knocking down zombies in his path. Despite their thrashing and flailing, the creatures proved powerless against Mason's onslaught. Finally reaching the street where another pack of ghouls resided, Mason's momentum carried him through the swarm of zombies, the ghoul impaled on his fist still writhing helplessly as it dangled in the air. As Mason flung the impaled zombie to the side, it landed with a thud on the pavement before being dispatched by Hudson's axe. Standing in the street, they took a moment to survey their surroundings, their gazes fixed towards the west. Small groups of creatures were scattered about, most of them oblivious to their presence. Looks like we're good for a little bit, Hudson remarked, a hint of relief in his voice. I'll lead the way for a little while. We're going to blow right by these things, so keep up, Mason declared, his tone confident. Jane and Calvin nodded in agreement as the four of them set off down the street with purposeful haste. Chapter 4 Mason and Hudson alternated taking point, clearing a path through the undead horde while Jane and Calvin made their way through the streets. Over the course of fifteen blocks they plowed through dozens of zombies, leaving a trail of fallen creatures in their wake as they sped past hundreds more scattered throughout the area. Their fortunate streak, however, came to an abrupt halt when they encountered a massive mob of zombies blocking the road ahead, numbering in the hundreds. Some of the undead turned their attention towards the approaching group. Well, we aren't pushing our way through that, Jane remarked grimly. Come on, let's cut over a block and see if it's clearer over there, Mason suggested. The group veered northward down the next street, still several blocks away from the formidable mob. While the side street had its share of zombies, the group mostly ignored them as they pressed forward. However, one of the zombies stood out from the rest, 
moving considerably faster than the others. Hey bro, you want the honors, Mason offered. Yeah, let's see how this goes, Hudson replied. Hudson took point, patiently waiting as the fast-moving zombie reached the clearing in the middle of the road, with a couple of packs of slower zombies trailing behind. With precise aim, Hudson hurled the axe end over end towards the runner. The head of the weapon struck the creature's chest dead center, knocking it backward onto the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Hudson dashed forward, reaching the fallen ghoul just as it rose to its feet. Grabbing hold of the axe handle, he held the creature in place directly in front of him, ready for Mason's attack. Mason approached from behind, delivering a powerful punch through the back of the zombie's head with such force that the spike pierced through the eye socket, impaling the eyeball on the end. Hudson couldn't help but let out a laugh at the sight. Oh bro, I wish you could see this from my view. That was awesome. Hudson exclaimed with a mix of excitement and amusement. That eyeball popped out like it was in some 3D movie back in the day. Mason chuckled as he withdrew his fist, watching the eyeball fall to the ground as the creature collapsed. Jane couldn't suppress a chuckle either, but Calvin's expression turned pale, his stomach churning with nausea. Are you all right there, Calvin? You don't look so hot, Mason inquired. Calvin shook his head, struggling to compose himself. Yeah, this world just isn't my cup of tea. Don't worry, man. Once we hit the high seas, you'll be golden, Mason reassured him, offering a supportive pat on the back. Forcing a nod, Calvin attempted to steady himself as Mason signaled for them to resume their journey. The group sprinted down the road, reaching the next westbound street. However, their hopes were dashed when they saw that it was just as densely packed with zombies as the previous road. What in the hell is going on? Why are they all packed up like that? Hudson voiced their collective concern. As zombies slowly shuffled towards them, none coming within 15 yards, Mason kept a vigilant watch while the group deliberated. Maybe it's other survivors? Jane speculated. Sucks to be them. Because there's no way we can help them like we helped you, Hudson remarked grimly. Calvin interjected with a revelation. It's the train. The group turned to him with curiosity, puzzled by his statement. What train? Jane inquired. I don't know which one, but it's definitely a train. It cuts through the neighborhood at street level, Calvin explained. Meanwhile, Mason broke away from the group to engage a couple of zombies, dispatching them with several punches from his spiked fist. Where's the next cross street? Jane asked. I don't know, but I can't imagine that it's going to be much better. Calvin admitted. Who's running the trains? Hudson asked. A bunch of the routes out this way are automated. They have their own power source too, so we're all in the dark, but they keep going, Calvin revealed. Mason glanced back the way they came, noticing a dozen zombies converging in a group and steadily advancing towards them. We need to keep walking, bro, Mason urged. Let's keep going this way. Maybe we'll get lucky with the crossing. Hudson suggested optimistically. The group quickened their pace, putting distance between themselves and the approaching group of zombies while also avoiding the smaller packs scattered throughout the street. Moments later, the distant rumble of a passing train reached their ears. What do you know Calvin was right? Jane remarked. I'm not just a pack mule, you know, Calvin quipped with a hint of pride. Continuing onward for two more blocks, they encountered the same situation at the cross streets, packs of zombies drawn to the noise of the passing trains. As they moved, Jane suddenly stopped in the middle of the road. We gotta keep moving, Jane, Hudson urged. I got an idea. Look, Jane said, pointing towards a three-story building nestled within the neighborhood. It appeared out of place until they noticed the sign indicating it was a high school. What about it? Calvin inquired. A school this size is going to have a sports field, and it's not on this side. Which means it's on the other side, Jane explained. Mason and Hudson exchanged smiles, their enthusiasm mirrored in their nods of agreement. And it could be up against the tracks, Mason added. It's worth a shot. Come on, bro. Let's go back to school, Hudson declared. Without further deliberation, the two men immediately set off towards the school. Jane and Calvin struggled to keep up as they hurried towards the building. 
Approaching the school, they noticed high metal fences on either side, barring entry onto the school grounds. However, their attention was soon drawn to movement inside the building. Several creatures pressed against the blood-soaked glass, their excitement palpable as they anticipated the arrival of fresh meat. The brothers wasted no time, with Mason swiftly veering left, thumping on the doors to grab the creature's attention, while Hudson dashed to the right, heading for the less crowded area to commence working on the door. Stand back, Hudson commanded. Jane and Calvin complied, stepping away as instructed, while Hudson began hacking at the top part of the door, a safety panel of glass. With a few forceful strikes, the axe pierced the window, yet it refused to shatter. Jane and Calvin pivoted, spotting a group of zombies advancing from the street. Meanwhile, from the open front door of a nearby house emerged a runner, instantly drawn to the commotion, sprinting towards them. Hudson. Hudson. Calvin called urgently. Calvin's pleas fell on deaf ears as Hudson persisted in his efforts on the door. Undeterred, Jane interposed herself between Calvin and the rapidly approaching runner, now a mere 30 yards away. With her spike fist poised, Jane braced herself, observing the creature's quick approach with a keen intensity. As it closed the distance to a mere 10 yards, she tensed, pulling her fist back in readiness for the decisive strike. At the opportune moment, Jane unleashed her blow with all her might. The tip of the spike found its mark, driving forcefully through the creature's forehead and into its zombie brain. The zombie's momentum sent it crashing into Jane, knocking her off her feet and onto the ground, the ghoul landing heavily atop her. Despite landing what she hoped was a fatal blow, Jane's uncertainty drove her into a panicked frenzy. With adrenaline coursing through her veins, Jane rained down punches on the creature's head, pulverizing its skull with each blow until Hudson rushed over. He seized the corpse by the back of its shirt and forcefully yanked it off Jane. A broad grin spread across Hudson's face, reminiscent of a proud father witnessing his child's first home run in Little League. You got him, slugger. He's down for the count. Hudson exclaimed, his voice filled with admiration and pride. Jane steadied herself, accepting Hudson's outstretched hand to rise to her feet. Her face, streaked with blood, reflected a mix of confusion and relief. She wiped away a bit of the blood before meeting Hudson's gaze. I'm good. I think she uttered uncertainly, seeking reassurance from her brother in arms. Hudson chuckled heartily, delivering a friendly smack to her shoulder. Yeah, girl, you're more than good. That's one hell of a left hook you've got there. Jane managed a strained smile, a chuckle escaping her lips as the tension slowly ebbed away now that the immediate danger had passed. Come on, Hudson urged, his voice buoyant with excitement. There's plenty more to take down inside. He let out a sharp whistle, catching Mason's attention. Across the front of the building, Mason was engaged in a frenetic dance, keeping the zombies within occupied. We're in over here, bro. Hudson called out to Mason. Mason waved to the creatures before darting towards his companions. I'll catch up with you guys in a sec. Mason joined the others just as Hudson reached in through the hole he'd made in the door to release the latch. His eyes fell on Jane, her figure drenched in blood from dispatching the runner. Is that your first kill? Mason inquired, his tone laced with curiosity. Jane nodded somberly. Yeah, it is. How's it feel? Mason pressed further, his grin widening. Not as good as my next one is going to feel, Jane replied. Mason's grin grew even broader, and he let out a hearty laugh, giving her shoulder a supportive squeeze. Watch yourself, Jane. I'm pretty sure my bro is in love, Hudson teased, earning a playful wink from Mason as he moved up to the door, joining Hudson. With Hudson opening the door, the two brothers rushed inside, immediately setting to work on hacking away at the zombies crowding around the entrance. Working as a team, Hudson swung his axe with precision while Mason's spiked fist punched through skulls, reducing the ghouls at the front to a pile of lifeless bodies on the ground. Inside, Jane and Calvin hurriedly secured the door behind them, casting a wary glance outside where a horde of zombies staggered toward their location. Though initially dispersed, the zombies quickly gathered en masse, converging upon the school with menacing intent. 
By the time the zombies approached within 30 yards of the door, they formed an impenetrable mass, spanning the entire width of the entrance. Well, we're not going back out that way, Calvin remarked. It's just as well, there's nothing back that way for us anyway. We're kind of all in on moving west, Jane replied, her tone resolute. Turning their attention to the brothers, Jane and Calvin observed Hudson and Mason gleefully dispatching the zombies by the door. With a final swing of the axe, the last creature fell. Both Hudson and Mason glanced outside, noticing the approaching mob. Who knew we'd ever be happy being inside a school again? Ha bro? Hudson mused. That might be the strangest thing that's happened today, Mason agreed with a chuckle. Both men broke out into laughter that echoed throughout the cavernous hallways of the school. As their voices subsided, they were replaced by the unmistakable sounds of zombie moans. Don't worry, we'll take care of them too, Hudson assured. While Hudson exuded confidence, concern rippled through the group as the moans were soon accompanied by the sound of fast-moving footsteps. Jane couldn't help but yell out. Oh my God, runners. Chapter 5 As the footsteps within the school grew louder and nearer, Hudson sprang into action. Positioned on the right side of the entryway, he noticed a large folding table adorned with information about upcoming school events. Without hesitation, he darted over to the table, seizing it and dragging it into the middle of the floor. On the opposite side, Mason positioned himself, preparing his spiked weapon for imminent combat. Attempting to assist on the right side, Jane moved forward, but Hudson grabbed her shoulder, gently pulling her back. Only if they get around, he ordered. She didn't argue, only nodding as she took several steps back to join Calvin, who looked visibly terrified. After a few tense moments, the first runner came into view around the corner. It took a moment for the creature to notice the group, but upon spotting them, it emitted an excited moan before sprinting towards Mason. With a taunting gesture, Mason waved his free hand towards the ghoul, goading it on. As the creature reached him, Mason greeted it with a powerful punch to the forehead, knocking the zombie off its feet and driving it forcefully into the ground. Just as the first runner impacted with the floor, five more emerged from around the corner, sprinting straight toward the group. Hudson wasted no time, springing into action. He positioned himself behind the table, pushing it towards the approaching runners with all his strength. As the zombies collided with the table, driving it back towards Hudson, he used his waist to anchor it in place while he readied his axe. With a forceful swing, Hudson drove the blade deep into the skull of the center creature, the axe becoming embedded in its torso. But as he attempted to retrieve his weapon, one of the other runners grabbed the fallen zombie and shoved it backwards, dislodging the axe from Hudson's grasp. Bro, I need a hand. Hudson called out urgently to Mason. Mason reached into his back belt, retrieving the handgun and tossing it towards Hudson as he dashed towards the table. His focus was fixed on a creature that had been shoved out to the left of the table, heading straight for Hudson. Hudson caught the handgun and wasted no time, immediately aiming it at some of the runners on the other side of the table. Though not the best shot, at that range he was deadly. As he fired, he quickly glanced over to see his brother intercepting the ghoul that was attempting to flank him. With a single punch, the tip of the bolt pierced through the side of the creature's head, sending it tumbling onto the table. Hudson fired off a couple more shots, ending the threat before them. As soon as the last runner dropped, Hudson kicked the table away from him, backing up alongside Mason. Hudson aimed the handgun towards the hallway from which the zombies had emerged, ready for any further threats. They stood there for several tense moments, their senses heightened, before finally letting their guard down, while moans still echoed through the hallways, there were no longer any rapid footsteps accompanying them. Hudson handed the gun back to Mason. Appreciate the assist there, bro, he said sincerely. Mason nodded, a grin breaking across his face. Anytime, he replied. Hudson strode over, flipping the table and retrieving his axe from the head of the fallen creature. The group then proceeded to navigate through the school. As they passed a hallway, they glanced down it to see a dozen shamblers slowly making their way towards them from the far end, still a good 50 yards away. Leave them be. By the time they get up to us, we'll be long gone, Hudson said. 
Continuing down the main hall towards the back of the school, which lay a couple of hundred yards away, they reached the next open area. To their right stood the cafeteria, its large doors leading out to the fields visible beyond. Look, by the cash registers, Calvin pointed out. The group turned their attention to the cafeteria cash registers, spotting a display stand of crackers and breakfast bars. What do you think, bro? Carb up while we scout it out, Mason suggested. Hudson nodded in agreement as the group made their way over to the display stand. Each of them grabbed a couple of bars, tearing into them and devouring the quick sustenance as they continued their journey towards the back of the building. Past the doors awaited the sports fields, two football fields side by side. Scattered across the expanse were a handful of creatures that had wandered in from the right, where a car had crashed through the fence, knocking down a section of it. The overturned car lay just beyond the damaged fence, conspicuously devoid of any zombies. Noticing a yellow sign on the back of the car reading student driver, Calvin remarked, well, that explains it. Both brothers erupted into laughter, Mason delivering a playful smack on Calvin's back. Now you're getting into it, Mason remarked, his joviality contagious as Calvin joined in the laughter, his tension and apprehension easing. Once the laughter subsided, the group returned their focus to the surroundings. Across the fields, they spotted a formidable metal fence, seven feet high, unlike the chain-link fences on either side. Its construction seemed designed to thwart easy traversal, with vertical pieces and narrow gaps between each post. At the top, it curved to a point, facing back towards the school. Their attention was momentarily diverted as a train rumbled past. Getting over that is going to be a pain, Jane remarked. You two have good ankles, right? Hudson asked. As far as I know, why? Jane responded, curiosity evident in her voice. Because Mason and I are going to boost you up and over when we get there. It won't be any big deal. Landing, on the other hand. Hudson trailed off, leaving the implication hanging. I think I'll be okay as long as we can toss these bags over first, Calvin added. Mason grinned mischievously. I would say we could have another wager, bro. See who can toss it the furthest. But I'd hate to show you up by landing it on the tracks, he teased, his competitive spirit shining through. Hudson chuckled at his brother's remark before replying, Why would I bet with you, bro? We're not going to be able to find a tattoo artist to give you a matching unicorn tattoo. Both brothers erupted into laughter, prompting Jane to shake her head in amusement. What's on your mind, girl? Hudson inquired, noticing Jane's contemplative expression. I'm just thinking about what we're going to be dealing with once we get over to the other side of the tracks, Jane admitted. Whatever it is, we'll be able to handle it, Mason reassured her confidently. We still have a couple more miles to go, and we've been lucky to even make it this far. We need to find some place where those things aren't, Jane insisted. Out to sea is the only place where we're going to find that, Hudson remarked. Yeah, my bro is right. We'll get us out there, don't worry, Mason added. As they conversed, Calvin remained deep in thought. Finally, he had a eureka moment. I know where we can go, Calvin announced. Where? Jane inquired eagerly. Once we get across the tracks, we start working our way north towards Greenwood Heights, Calvin suggested, his voice brimming with newfound confidence. The cemetery. Nice thinking, man, Mason exclaimed enthusiastically. The cemetery? I'm confused, Jane admitted. Calvin glanced at Mason, who wore the expression of the quiet kid in class who finally had the answer to the teacher's question. Mason, would you like to fill her in? Calvin prompted, a playful grin on his face. Yeah, he would. Hudson chimed in with a chuckle, earning a playful smack on the arm from Mason. Sorry, Hudson apologized, with a grin, as Jane laughed along. Mason eagerly took the opportunity to explain, well, the Greenwood Cemetery was the site of the Battle of Long Island during the Revolutionary War. Later on in the 1800s, it became the first public park in Brooklyn, and was even the inspiration behind the creation of Central Park. Today, it's a historic landmark, home to numerous monuments and famous graves. The other three people stared at Mason with curious awe, impressed by his unexpected knowledge. Finally, Mason shrugged nonchalantly. What? 
I can know things, he remarked with a grin. Nice work, bro. Hudson praised, offering Mason a high five. Jane couldn't help but express her curiosity. How did you know all that, though? She asked. Mason explained, I went through a phase on my runs where I would download podcasts instead of listening to music. I wanted to learn a little more about where I lived. Jane smiled, nodding in appreciation. We should all do that more often, she suggested. I agree, at least until we get to the Jersey Shore. Not sure we want to look up that history, Calvin joked, eliciting laughter from the group. Their laughter was interrupted by moaning coming from down the hall, signaling the approaching creatures. So we're really going to the cemetery? During an outbreak of the living dead? Hudson questioned. I figured all the dead people there would be under the ground. And there's a brick wall surrounding it. Hopefully there won't be much of anything inside, Calvin reasoned optimistically. I like it. Let's do it, Hudson agreed. Hudson nodded before striding purposefully towards the door, the rest of his group following closely behind. They burst out onto the fields, drawing the attention of the scattered zombies. Instead of running, the group maintained a slower, deliberate pace. While most of the creatures were too far away to pose an immediate threat, a few stood in their path. Mason and Hudson stepped forward to deliver killing blows, dispatching them with ease. As they approached the final ghoul standing between them and the fence, Hudson deftly smacked its outstretched arms, spinning it around and holding it in place. Jane, you want to get in another shot? Just so you get the feel for how much power you need, Hudson offered. Jane nodded eagerly and stepped forward. Without hesitation, she delivered a powerful punch, effortlessly piercing the forehead of the zombie. Hudson held up the now lifeless creature for a moment, nodding approvingly before tossing it aside. There we go. This girl can throw a punch, Hudson remarked proudly, a hint of admiration in his voice. Mason took charge, urging the group to proceed. Come on, let's get you two over the fence, he said, leading the way towards the fence and positioning himself just below the curved bars above them. Hudson joined him, both ready to boost Jane and Calvin over. On three. Here we go. One, two, three. Mason counted down. Mason boosted Jane up first, who grabbed onto the bars as Hudson tossed the bags over before repeating the process for Calvin. It took both of them a few moments to pull themselves over, but they managed to do so, landing somewhat softly on the ground. Once they were safely over, Mason and Hudson took a few steps back, preparing to make their own ascent. First one over gets the master bedroom at the house, Mason declared with a hint of playful competition. I was going to give it to you anyway, bro, just in case, you know. Hudson responded with a grin. Mason thought about it for a moment before nodding. Glad you always got my back. Come on, let's get over there, he said. In unison, they darted towards the fence, leaping up and grabbing hold of the bars. It took them a moment before they were over the top, but they too landed safely on the other side. As they reached the other side, they turned their attention towards the fence which butted up against a neighborhood. A few zombies scattered about started to moan at the activity. We have to hurry and get over there before too many of them group up, Hudson urged, his voice tinged with urgency. The group nodded in agreement, but their progress was interrupted by the sound of a train approaching. They quickly stepped back from the tracks as the train sped by. As the train passed, they noticed several cars containing zombies, looking confused as their journey continued. Once the train had gone, they realized a dozen zombies had reached the fence, with more behind them. Come on, bro, we have to work quick. Chapter 6 Mason and Jane rushed across the tracks, reaching the zombies on the other side of the fence. The openings between the slats were barely wide enough for their spikes to penetrate punch as hard as you can. If you miss, it's going to hurt like hell, but we have to clear these things out, Mason instructed. I'm pretty sure I picked up some pain meds back at the pharmacy, so we'll be good, Jane responded confidently. Mason smiled, and the two of them began furiously punching through the fence at the zombies pressed up against it. Mason's blows were precise and effective, the years of fight training paying dividends. Jane encountered some difficulty, with the bolt occasionally smacking against the metal fence, sending vibrations through her hand. 
However, she shook off the discomfort and persevered, refusing to let it deter her. As they cleared a landing spot, Hudson crossed the tracks, tossing his axe over to join them. Calvin watched as it spun through the air, landing in the grass on the other side, the handle sticking up prominently. I'm going over, Hudson declared. Hudson sprinted towards the fence, his heart pounding with adrenaline as he leaped up as high as he could, grabbing onto the top with both hands. With a surge of strength, he hoisted himself up and over, landing on the ground with zombies closing in from both directions. Without hesitation, Hudson made a beeline for the axe, snatching it up and wielding it with deadly intent. Spinning around with the weapon, he unleashed a flurry of strikes, slicing through several zombie heads before coming to a halt. Spotting two creatures staggered a few feet away, Hudson wasted no time. He rushed towards them, swinging the axe with precision. The blade cleaved through the top of the first zombie's head, while he quickly reversed the motion, using the blunt end to smash into the face of the other with brutal force. As the second creature hit the ground, Hudson pounced. Stepping forward, he swung the weapon downwards, driving the blade directly into its face, the only thing stopping it being the ground itself. Turning back to the fence, Hudson watched as Mason boosted Jane over first. He ran over, assisting her to land softly on the ground before they both turned towards the few remaining zombies nearby. Let's clear these things out. Buy them a few minutes, Hudson declared, extending his axe towards Jane. She clanked it with her bolt fist in agreement. I'll go left, you go right, Jane suggested. Hudson nodded as the two of them advanced methodically selecting their targets and dispatching them with brutal blows to the head. It took them a moment, but soon enough, the remaining zombies were down for the count. Surveying the neighborhood, they noted that while there were more zombies nearby, they were still a considerable distance away. However, the sheer number of them was cause for concern. Any idea how far away this cemetery is? Hudson inquired. Maybe a mile? I'm not 100% sure, Jane responded her tone uncertain. That's going to be a hell of a run, especially if the streets look like that, Hudson remarked, his concern evident as he glanced towards the growing mob of zombies. Jane's gaze wandered, and she soon wore a smile on her face, catching Hudson's attention. What's got you all happy? Hudson asked. Check out the backyard there, Jane replied. Jane pointed towards a house a couple of doors down from where they stood. In the backyard sat a vintage muscle car, its sleek black exterior gleaming in the sunlight, a true beauty to behold. However, it was elevated on blocks, indicating that it was in need of repair. Oh, be still my heart, Hudson exclaimed, his eyes lighting up at the sight of the classic car. It's in a fenced-in yard. We should have time to look it over and get it fixed if need be, Jane suggested. As Hudson considered the possibilities, Calvin and Mason joined them, their attention drawn to the looming mob of zombies nearby. Calvin shook his head in disbelief. My God, how are we getting through that? He muttered. Mason, however, seemed unfazed. Oh, hell yeah, that looks like a good time to me, he remarked with excitement. Hudson pointed towards the black beauty in the yard. How about that one to the left? Mason adjusted his view, spotting the muscle car. His eyes lit up with delight as he playfully acted out his excitement, pretending his legs were about to give out from beneath him. Oh my bro, I haven't seen one of those in years, Mason exclaimed with enthusiasm. Well, let's go get it running so you can drive, Hudson declared. Mason remained fixated on the car as the group started to head towards the house. Jane had to grab him by the shirt and give it a tug to get him moving. The group ran hard, dodging a few ghouls on the street, aiming to beat the bulk of the mob to the gate. They arrived at the driveway just a few steps ahead of the front edge of the horde, which was rapidly growing into the low hundreds. Mason took the lead, entering the backyard first and scanning the area for any signs of trouble. He spotted a creature near the back door, attempting to gain entry into the house. Mason casually walked over and delivered a decisive blow to the creature's head with his spike, ending its threat. The others quickly joined Mason in the backyard, pulling the six-foot-tall wooden gate shut behind them. The gate didn't have much of a lock, just a block of wood that slotted into some bolted-on latches, but it seemed secure enough for the moment. As the mob of zombies gathered on the other side of the fence, pounding against it relentlessly, the group backed away slowly, 
keeping a wary eye on the gate as it swayed back and forth under the force of the undead onslaught. Hey bro, get into the house and make sure we're clear. We need to make some noise at the front while I check this bad boy out, Hudson instructed. Mason nodded and made his way to the back door, delivering a forceful kick that tore the lock away from the frame and sent the door swinging open. As he entered the house, he remained alert, scanning the interior for any signs of danger. Fortunately, he didn't encounter anything that resembled a threat. Entering the living room, Mason's guard dropped slightly as he noticed the only photos on the wall were of the zombie he had just pulverized standing beside the car out back. Jane soon entered the room and observed the same. A man who loved his car above everything else. That's kind of sad when you think about it, Jane remarked. Yeah, I mean, I get it. The car doesn't judge or argue or cheat. It just loves you back with as much as you give it, Mason replied as Jane gave him a curious look. I mean, that's what I've gathered from all the car guys my bro and I work with. We help them find original parts and all that. I'm not like them, Mason added in a flustered manner. Jane cracked a smile at his explanation, almost breaking into laughter as she patted him on the shoulder reassuringly. Come on, let's get those things away from the gate, Jane suggested. Jane and Mason walked over to the window, Jane using her bolt to break out the top part of the glass, prompting Mason to do the same. They leaned out of the broken window and began yelling. Hey gang, we're over here by the windows now. Why don't you come pay us a visit? Jane taunted, her voice filled with mock enthusiasm. Yeah, that's right. All you can eat buffet right here. You just have to figure out how to get to it. Mason chimed in. The two of them shared a moment of laughter as they watched the creatures break away from the front of the gate and shamble over towards the front of the house. Meanwhile, Hudson ducked underneath the car on the blocks to give it a once-over. He meticulously inspected every component determined to uncover what the car's previous owner had been working on. Okay, come on now, man. What were you working on? Hudson muttered to himself as he checked every inch of the car's underside. His concentration was interrupted by Calvin's voice. Hudson, Calvin said, his tone insistent. Give me a minute, man, I'm trying to think here, Hudson replied, his attention still focused on the car. Hudson, Calvin repeated, his voice more urgent this time. Calvin, buddy, just give me a minute, man, Hudson responded, growing slightly irritated as he continued his examination of the vehicle. Calvin let out a sigh before sliding over a quart of oil. As the plastic bottle hit Hudson in the side, he grabbed it before looking over to Calvin. There's an open case of this sitting in his passenger seat. I'm pretty sure he was just changing his oil, Calvin explained. Hudson thought about it for a moment before breaking into laughter. Tell me the truth, man. How much do you know about cars? Hudson asked, amusement evident in his voice. I know that the key goes into the ignition and the pedal on the right makes it go, Calvin replied with a shrug. Hudson laughed even harder before sliding out from under the car. Well, hell, that's good enough for today, my man, Hudson declared, his laughter echoing through the yard. He let out a loud whistle, and a moment later, Mason and Jane emerged from the house. Just gotta put a couple quarts in, and we'll be ready to roll. Hudson announced enthusiastically. I'll give them one last distraction, and I'll be out here, Mason volunteered. Hudson nodded approvingly as Calvin retrieved the oil from the front seat. As they worked on filling up the car, Mason returned to the front of the house, peering out through the windows. Most of the mob was pressed up against the front windows, unable to gain enough leverage to break through. Mason glanced over to the driveway, where a couple of dozen zombies still lingered. He let out a loud whistle, but they remained disinterested. Well, you guys had your chance to move, Mason muttered. Mason stepped outside, greeted by the sight of the sleek black muscle car waiting for him, everyone piled inside. A devilish grin spread across his face as he made his way to the driver's side. Entering the driver's seat, Mason slammed the door shut and gripped the wheel tightly. He ran his hand along the dashboard, inspecting every inch of the vehicle, careful not to scratch the windshield with his spike. Oh, this thing is a work of art, Mason exclaimed, his voice filled with admiration. It's a shame that we're going to scratch it all to hell, Hudson remarked with a hint of regret. So are we going to the cemetery still? 
or are we making a play for the docks? Mason inquired, turning to the group for input. That's a tough one. The cemetery is less than a mile away, but it's at least two miles before we'd reach the docks, Jane pointed out. I assume this thing has some good power behind it? Calvin asked. This beauty has enough horsepower to send your ass through the seat and into the trunk, Mason replied confidently. Good, so it should punch through some of those things. But a big enough mob is going to stop it, right? Calvin questioned. Mason and Hudson exchanged a knowing glance, nodding in agreement. Looks like the shorter distance wins out, Hudson concluded. Just because we get to the cemetery doesn't mean we have to get out. We can always drive alongside it until we can't, Jane suggested. Besides, aren't the docks a little further north from here anyway? Calvin added. Definitely heading north then, Mason affirmed. Mason started up the car, relishing the sound of its engine as it idled. Both brothers appreciated the purr of the engine, understanding that it might be the last time they experienced something so perfect. Just listen to her purr, Hudson remarked with a grin. Don't let that purr fool you, though. This kitten's got claws, Mason added, sharing a laugh with his brother as they exchanged a fist bump. Are you ready to do this? Hudson asked. I was born ready, bro. Mason replied confidently. With wild-eyed expressions, both brothers were living their best life. Mason revved the engine, pulling up on the handbrake to make the tires spin. The screeching sound and light smoke filled the air as adrenaline coursed through their veins. Mason gripped the wheel tightly, his knuckles turning white as he prepared to take action. Here we go. Chapter 7 Mason released the brake, and the tires eagerly gripped the ground, propelling the vehicle toward the wooden gate. Inside the car, Jane and Calvin tensed, their fear palpable in the back seat. Meanwhile, Mason and Hudson wore wide grins, their excitement evident as they let out triumphant shouts. With a resounding crash, the car smashed through the fence, the muscle car jolting forward upon impact, but effortlessly pushing through the barrier and the zombies beyond. Bodies were sent flying, a few even slipping under the front of the car, causing it to momentarily leap into the air. Landing heavily, Mason sharply turned the wheel to the left as they reached the road. He pressed down on the accelerator as the others glanced back at the house, watching the mob in front of it pivot to give chase, their pursuit futile against the speeding car. Within moments, they were a block away, veering northward. The road ahead stretched mostly clear, save for a few ghouls scattered in their path, drawn by the thunderous engine noise. Undeterred, Mason powered past them. But as they advanced, the zombies began to flood onto the road, forcing Mason to skillfully maneuver between them. His evasion tactics served them well for several blocks until the sheer number of undead became overwhelming. Hang on, Mason shouted. Instead of barreling through them, Mason skillfully drifted to the right before executing a sharp left turn at the next intersection. Inside the car, Everyone was jostled around as it spun, eventually coming to a halt facing west in the intersection. Their path ahead revealed an even grimmer scene. Hundreds of creatures pressed against a house, spilling into the street and blocking their way. Mason checked the rearview mirror, noting that the eastern route appeared relatively clear. With a quick pull of the handbrake and a heavy press on the gas pedal, Mason induced the tires to spin once more. After a tense moment, he released the brake while executing another hard left turn. The car's tires screeched against the pavement as it began to spin around. The back end of the vehicle collided with a few creatures that ventured too close, but within moments, they were facing the right direction again. Mason released the brake, and the car surged forward. They traveled a block before halting, scanning the road to the north. Finding it relatively clear, they turned in that direction and accelerated grateful for the temporary respite from ghouls. A few moments later, they spotted a sign for Greenwood Cemetery, just a quarter mile northward. However, their relief was short-lived as zombies began to shamble into the road from nearby streets. Undeterred, Mason pressed on, his resolve unwavering as he navigated through the undead. Despite weaving between several packs of ghouls, they were eventually confronted with a wreck blocking their path, forcing Mason to veer left. But even this route was fraught with danger as more zombies emerged before them. With no other option, 
Mason braced himself and plowed through them, his voice cutting through the chaos. This is going to get bumpy. The car jolted over several zombies, causing its occupants to be tossed around despite their seatbelts. It was a turbulent journey, but they managed to clear the pack and push ahead a few blocks until they encountered a daunting sight, a massive horde of ghouls sprawled out ahead, fixated on a building rather than their approaching vehicle. Mason brought the car to a halt, despite a few zombies sluggishly advancing towards them. What are you thinking, bro? Hudson asked. I'm thinking this thing has enough horsepower to punch through them, Mason replied confidently. We might not make it to the other side, Hudson cautioned. If we don't make it to the other side in this beauty, we're not making it on foot either. And we need to go that way, Mason insisted. We can find another way. What about the cemetery? Calvin interjected. Look at where we are, though, Calvin Jane said. Jane directed their attention up the road where the outer wall of the cemetery loomed in sight. Those things are trying to get inside through the front gate, she observed, her tone grave. The group scrutinized the scene, confirming that they were indeed just outside one of the entrances. With that many of those things out there, it's a good bet that they're not inside. At least not in those numbers, Mason speculated. I know one way we can find out, bro, Hudson chimed in, a mischievous grin spreading across his face. Mason and Hudson exchanged knowing looks, their laughter bubbling up as Calvin leaned back, tightening his seatbelt. Jane chuckled to herself, following suit. Hang on tight, because this is really going to be a bumpy ride, Mason warned with a smirk. He yanked the handbrake and floored the gas pedal. The back tire spun furiously, emitting a cacophony of screeching and smoke. Hit it, bro, Hudson urged eagerly. Mason released the brake, and the car shot forward like a bullet from a gun. They hurtled toward the mass of decaying flesh at nearly a hundred miles per hour. The initial impact was brutal, causing the group to lurch forward as the car decelerated slightly, but they pressed on. At first, bodies flew in all directions before disappearing beneath the front of the car. The vehicle bounced violently, with moments where all four tires were off the ground, driving over the bodies in their path. It was a tense and harrowing ordeal but after several heart-pounding moments, they finally emerged on the other side. The car bore the scars of their daring escape. The windshield shattered in multiple places, the front end dented severely, and the dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree with warning lights. Oh, that's not good, Mason muttered. What is it? Jane asked. Before Mason could respond, smoke began to billow from the engine, accompanied by unsettling noises. Desperate, Mason pressed on the gas pedal, but the car barely sputtered along. We're dead in the water, Mason announced grimly. Those things must have gotten into the engine, or at least parts of them, Hudson surmised. It doesn't matter why, it only matters that it's happening, Jane interjected firmly. Oh my God, look ahead, Calvin exclaimed. The group surveyed the street ahead, where another horde of creatures amassed, attempting to breach the cemetery through a different entrance. We're definitely not getting through that, Jane remarked. Mason's gaze shifted to the right, where the cemetery wall stood tall and sturdy, eight feet of solid stone. It's a good thing we don't need to, Mason said. He guided the car off the road, positioning it mere inches from the wall. Despite the car's state of disrepair, Mason was adamant about avoiding any further damage by scraping it against the wall. As soon as the car came to a stop, everyone spilled out from the driver's side. Mason climbed onto the roof of the car, then onto the wall, peering over to the other side. It's clear over here, toss me the bags. Hudson retrieved the bags one by one, tossing them up to Mason. Once they were safely on the other side, Jane and Calvin were assisted up to the top of the wall and carefully lowered down to the ground below. With everyone safely on the other side, Hudson joined Mason atop the wall both brothers casting a fond glance back at the car below. That was some next-level driving, bro, Hudson praised. Best car I'll ever drive. I'm going to have nightmares about the condition I left it in, though, Mason admitted ruefully. It had to be done, though. We'd be toast if you didn't, Hudson reassured him. Yeah, I know. It hurts, though, bro, Mason replied, 
his tone tinged with regret. When we get to Jersey, we'll find a restoration project and make it right, Hudson suggested optimistically. And then my soul will be at peace, Mason added with a hint of satisfaction. The two brothers exchanged a fist bump before leaping down to the ground to join the others. Jane stood at the ready with her spike weapon, scanning the surroundings intently but finding no immediate threats. The group lingered for a moment, taking in the tranquil scene of graves and pathways winding through the tree-lined landscape. If I wasn't acutely aware of what is going on in the world, I would swear it was just another day, Calvin remarked, a hint of disbelief in his voice. Still, let's stay on our toes. We've come too far to blow it now, Jane cautioned. The four of them found their bearings, setting their course west toward the docks. As they walked along the path, basking in the sunlight, they almost found themselves enjoying the moment. However, their peace was disrupted as they neared the next gate, where the moans of the horde outside became audible. They adjusted their path, veering away from the gate to avoid drawing attention. While they knew the creatures likely couldn't breach the cemetery, they didn't want to risk agitating them. After another half mile of walking, they came upon a curious sight. I'm no cemetery expert, but does that look off to anybody? Jane remarked, pointing to a mausoleum atop a small hill ahead. A large tent was erected on top of it, with a young woman sitting on the edge, gazing out. Hudson let out a piercing whistle to catch her attention. Even from a distance they could see the fear in her eyes, but they waved nonetheless, eliciting a hesitant wave in return. Should we go introduce ourselves? Calvin suggested. She looks kind of hot from here, so yeah. We should, Hudson replied with a grin. Jane shook her head, silently disapproving of Hudson's comment, as the group continued to approach. As they drew nearer, two more figures emerged from the tent, a young couple, both looking disheveled with their clothes stained in dried blood. Taking the lead, Jane stepped forward to initiate conversation. Nice day for a walk, isn't it? She greeted. The trio atop the mausoleum appeared puzzled, unsure of how to respond. I'm Jane. These are my friends Calvin, Hudson, and Mason, Jane introduced, hoping to break the awkward silence. After a moment, the guy spoke up. I'm Landon. This is Skye and Holly, he offered. Spending the apocalypse with two chicks in a tent. Nice, Hudson remarked with a grin. Dude, Holly is my sister, Landon clarified, a hint of annoyance in his voice. Undeterred, Hudson maintained his smirk. Your sister, huh? he remarked, his tone carrying a hint of bravado. Jane quickly intervened, giving Hudson a gentle smack on the shoulder to quiet him down. You'll have to forgive him. He's... He's a bit of a maniac, but in a good way, Jane explained, offering an apologetic smile. Landon shrugged, seemingly unfazed. It's okay, and not that surprising. You'd have to be a maniac to go outside in this thing, he remarked wryly. Holly redirected the conversation. Speaking of, what are you doing out here anyway? She inquired. We're getting out of town, Mason declared plainly. The trio looked at him with confusion, prompting Holly to seek clarification. I'm sorry, you're what? We're getting out of here. They know how to start a ferry, so we're going to go borrow one, Jane explained matter-of-factly. Landon burst into laughter, but quickly subdued it when he realized no one else was laughing. You're serious, he stated incredulously. Very serious, Landon. Nobody is coming to save us, so my bro here and I thought we'd do it ourselves, Hudson affirmed. Skye chimed in, where are you going to go? We have a little place down on the Jersey Shore. Figured we'd go set up shop down there, Mason replied. You can come with us if you want, Jane added. The three of them exchanged glances, their conversation unheard by the main group, but it was evident that Landon wasn't initially on board with the idea. However, after some persuasion from both women, he relented. Okay, we're almost out of food, and there's not really much in the neighborhood. So what do we have to lose, right? Landon reasoned, his voice tinged with resignation. There you go, buddy, that's the right attitude, Hudson chimed in, patting Landon on the back. Calvin, dig our friends out some weapons while we walk. Calvin nodded in acknowledgement as the trio descended to the ground. 
Once they reunited, everyone shook hands and exchanged brief introductions. Finally, Mason spoke over them. Okay, let's get to the docks. We have a ferry to borrow. Chapter 8 The group made their way toward the western wall of the cemetery, their footsteps hushed as they acclimated to their newly acquired fist spike weapons. Silence enveloped them, broken only by the faint sounds of moaning emanating from the other side of the barrier, prompting them to tread cautiously. Their gaze fell upon the entrance gate, situated approximately a hundred yards to their right. Drawing closer to the wall, they maintained a safe distance from the gate, coming to a halt just beneath it. Mason and Hudson exchanged glances, extending their hands in a familiar gesture. What are you doing? Jane asked. Deciding who gets to go look, Mason explained as they engaged in a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. Mason chose rock, while Hudson opted for paper. Gotcha, bro. Hudson declared triumphantly, prompting Mason's laughter. Best two out of three. Mason suggested, but Jane intervened. We don't have the time. Take your loss like a man and get climbing, she urged, to which Hudson retorted, hell no, he's not climbing. I won. I get to go. Jane chuckled, shaking her head in amusement. Mason assumed a crouched position, offering Hudson a boost upward. It took him a moment to reach the top, scanning the surroundings. I can see the water, Hudson reported. And the fairies? We have our pick of them, Hudson confirmed. What about those things? She questioned. Hudson cast a lingering glance toward the gate, where another horde of undead congregated, their numbers swelling as they attempted to breach the barrier. His gaze then shifted upward to the pinnacle of the gate, where an inflatable Revolutionary War soldier proudly brandished a flag. What are the odds of that? A cemetery hosting an event just before the end of the world, Hudson remarked wryly, shaking his head in disbelief as he directed his attention back to the group below. If they hadn't done that, this would be a walk in the park. He chuckled lightly, his eyes scanning the vicinity. If we can get to the docks, we should be okay. There's not too many of them over there, he suggested optimistically. Okay, pull me over first, Jane instructed, prompting Hudson to comply. You heard the lady, bro. Boost her up, Hudson directed Mason, who assisted in hoisting Jane to the top of the wall so she could survey the surroundings. Peering down, she observed a tranquil scene below, a small tree-lined area offering minimal cover. I'll make sure nothing gets close to us, Jane said. Hudson exchanged a glance with Mason, signaling for his weapon. If you get too many of them, let me know, and I'll come help, Hudson offered as Jane descended to the ground. Almost immediately upon landing, Jane detected movement behind a bush, followed by the unmistakable sound of moaning. A slow-moving creature, lacking its lower extremities, emerged. With precision, Jane delivered a single punch to the creature's skull, neutralizing the threat efficiently. She turned to Hudson, offering a thumbs up in confirmation. Okay, bro, send the next one up, Hudson instructed. It took a few minutes, but eventually, everyone successfully made it to the other side of the wall, taking care to remain concealed to avoid alerting the nearby horde. Once safely on the ground, the brothers assumed the lead position. Surveying the street ahead, just a block away from the docks, they observed a straight path across a parking lot littered with several cars and a contingent of zombies shuffling aimlessly. Okay, we're taking point and moving like we're late for a date with a supermodel, Mason announced with a hint of humor, shooting a playful wink in Jane's direction. We're going to make our way down to the last ferry and hope it's empty. Once aboard, it'll take me some time to get it running, Hudson explained, outlining their plan. But if we release the tow lines, we should be able to push off into the water, even if it's just a few feet, which should suffice, Jane added. Questions? Nobody? Good. Let's move, Mason concluded decisively. The two brothers burst from cover, the rest of the group following closely behind as they sprinted across the road and into the parking lot. Navigating through the aisles, they opted for the path of least resistance, avoiding unnecessary confrontation with the undead. Rather than engaging in combat, they utilized their strength to hoist the ghouls off the ground, hurling them over the hoods of parked cars. However, their efforts inadvertently triggered a car alarm when one of the zombies landed forcefully on a pristine vehicle. Damn it, Hudson cursed, the group turning to witness the consequences of their actions. 
the blaring alarm acted as a beacon, drawing the attention of the mob near the gate. Reacting as a unified entity, the horde pivoted, their collective movement directed towards the source of the disturbance. Run. Mason commanded urgently. The group plowed through the remaining zombies in the parking lot, their strides purposeful as they sprinted towards the distant docks, which lay a couple of hundred yards away. Though the car alarm's piercing wail had ceased, its echo had already served its purpose, alerting every undead presence in the vicinity to their presence. As they reached the docks, the sight that greeted them was disheartening. Zombies emerged from the depths of the ferries, drawn by the commotion. Several of the creatures obstructed their path on the dock itself, shuffling in their direction. Undeterred, Mason and Hudson once again employed their brute strength, lowering their shoulders and barreling through the obstacles in their path. The zombies were sent tumbling into the water, clearing a path for the group's progress towards the waiting ferry. As they closed in on the last ferry in line, with a scattering of creatures still aboard, Hudson assumed the lead position. Leaping from the dock onto the boat's low edge, he wasted no time, charging towards the nearest zombie. With a swift and forceful swing, he drove the axe into the side of the creature's head, effectively neutralizing the threat. Retrieving his weapon, he surveyed the surroundings, quickly identifying the control room and the staircase leading to it. Get up there, bro. Get this thing started, Mason instructed. Hudson nodded in acknowledgement and made his way towards the control room, determination driving his movements. Meanwhile, Mason pivoted his attention to the remaining threats aboard the boat, spotting a few scattered zombies. Without hesitation, he dashed towards the closest one, driving his spike into its head and dispatching it. Just as he finished, his attention was drawn to Calvin, who approached another zombie with a heavy bag of food. With a powerful swing, Calvin struck the ghoul on the shoulder, sending it tumbling over the side of the boat. Hell yeah, Calvin. Mason cheered, a surge of adrenaline coursing through him as Jane dealt with the remaining undead presence nearby. However, their brief respite was interrupted by Landon's urgent call from the dock. We have incoming. Landon's warning spurred Mason into action. He rushed to the edge of the dock, weapon poised, scanning the area for signs of the approaching threat. Dozens of zombies were advancing along the docks, the nearest ones approximately 40 yards away and steadily closing in. Get these ropes undone, Mason commanded. As the urgency of their situation mounted, each member of the group leaped into action, their collective efforts focused on releasing the ropes from the metal holders on the docks. Despite their concerted exertions, progress was slow, particularly with the stubborn last rope at the back of the boat proving difficult to dislodge. Sensing the need for swift action, Mason turned to Landon, issuing a directive. Get to the back of the boat and help. Mason pivoted towards the front of the boat, planting his feet firmly on the edge of the dock. Summoning every ounce of strength, he pushed with all his might, emitting a primal scream as he strained against the resistance. His efforts paid off as the boat began to drift away from the dock, albeit gradually at first. Once the momentum took hold, however, it continued to inch further out over the water. Glancing back towards the encroaching mob, now mere yards away, Mason wasted no time. With a sense of defiance, he turned and sprinted down the docks, drawing the attention of the creatures towards him. Yeah, keep on me. Come on now, he taunted. As Mason led the horde away from the boat, Jane took charge at the front, using her voice as a weapon to divert the attention of several creatures. Her shouts compelled them to stumble off the dock and into the water below, effectively thinning the ranks of their pursuers. Meanwhile, at the back of the boat, Mason rushed to assist Landon and Holly in their efforts to push the vessel away from the dock. With combined strength and determination, they managed to overcome the resistance, and soon the boat was drifting away, mirroring the movement of the front. Get on. Get on. Mason urged, as Landon and Holly followed his command, scrambling aboard. With the boat now sufficiently distanced from the dock, Mason made a split-second decision. With a push, he propelled himself off the dock, his body arcing through the air, until he made contact with the boat's railing, clinging on for dear life. Landon quickly moved to support him. Come on, buddy, I got you. Landon and Holly rushed to assist Mason, pulling him over the edge and onto the ferry. Landing in a heap on his back, Mason displayed signs of pain but couldn't contain his exhilaration, his face contorting into a wild grin with a hint of madness in his eyes. A bout of crazed laughter erupted from him, 
echoing across the deck, causing the others to exchange nervous glances. Don't worry, he's just like that, Jane reassured them, approaching with a knowing smile. Despite their apprehension, the group relaxed slightly as Mason pulled himself upright, his gaze fixed on the dock now teeming with zombies. Yeah, none of you could get us. Mason bellowed triumphantly, pounding his chest in defiance. Jane chuckled softly, her expression a mixture of amusement and relief. I still think you're a maniac, but you came through, she remarked fondly. As the ferry's engine roared to life, signaling their imminent departure, smiles spread across the faces of the group. We came through, Mason echoed. The group ventured inside the ferry, remaining vigilant for any potential threats. Calvin stepped forward, preparing to take watch as they came across a staircase leading to the lower decks. Go check on your brother. I'll keep watch here until you get back, Calvin offered, donning one of the glove weapons. Landon nodded in agreement. I'll stand with you. Safety in numbers, he affirmed. As Mason and the others ascended the stairs to the control room, they found Hudson already there, wearing a grin of triumph. I told you I knew how to hotwire a ferry, Hudson declared proudly, his confidence radiating. Mason approached his brother, exchanging a forceful high five. I will wear that tattoo with pride for the rest of my days, bro, he declared. While they celebrated their success, Jane took charge of the radio, adjusting the dials to activate it. Hello? Is anybody out there? She called out into the static-filled void. After a moment, a gruff voice responded. Yeah, this is Carl with emergency management. Who in the holy hell is this? Mason stepped forward, seizing the radio. I'm Mason. My brother and I just borrowed one of your fairies. If you're near the water, we can come pick you up. Carl's initial disbelief was palpable. You borrowed a fairy? What the hell do you mean you borrowed a fairy? He retorted incredulously. It's just as it sounds. We're not going too far, just down to Jersey, Mason explained, his tone casual. There was a pause, followed by the sound of laughter crackling over the line. I gotta say, that's a first. I mean, I'm not even mad at it. I'm pretty sure my next paycheck isn't going through, so as far as I'm concerned, it's all yours, Carl conceded. That's generous of you, Carl. Do you want us to come pick you up? Mason offered. Carl spoke like a man resigned to his fate. Me? Hell no, I am where I am, and I'm not going anywhere. But I appreciate the offer nonetheless. However, I do have a favor to ask, he continued. Go for it, Carl, Mason replied. I may have some others who could use your help. Would you mind setting anchor and hanging out for a day or two? Let me see what I can work out. Carl requested. Consider it done, Carl. We'll be here, he assured. Mason glanced at the others, receiving nods of agreement from each of them. Yeah, we'll hang out, Carl, Mason affirmed. I appreciate that. And when we get a little more time this evening, you're going to have to tell me how you managed to steal. I mean, borrow the ferry, Carl remarked. You'll enjoy it, Mason replied with a chuckle. Okay, you guys sit tight. I'll be in touch soon, Carl concluded before the line went silent. As the group gazed out the window, they observed the docks, now swarming with zombies. Hudson took charge of the controls, releasing the anchor with a press of a button before shutting off the engine. Okay, this is home for the next couple of days. So let's get comfortable, Hudson announced. And go see if there's a snack bar, Mason added with a grin. Hudson and Mason shared a laugh, exchanging a forceful high five as they celebrated their successful escape to safety. With the ferry anchored and their immediate surroundings secured, the group settled in, ready to take a much-deserved break. The End